smell something inside of the church. Uh, the last uh, work session we had in September, I'd ask the uh, council to see what the city's default was as far as the lighting and the uh, water system. Uh, and what the city's default was as far as the lighting and water system subdivision. We're supposed to be smashing on that. I, I assume we've looked into that or we haven't. Yeah, I, I, I talked with Mr. Uh, Avery Walton, and he's uh, getting the Georgia power from that. Okay, so he'll be having to put the lights in. Well, I don't know if he's going to do it, but I mean, he's going to talk to them. You said something about them releasing it. He had to call them for them to release for right. lights to be put in there. Right. After that, if he's the developer of record, would he? I, I guess who would bear the burden of putting the lights in the subdivision? We don't have to ask him that. See, that's the situation we're in, that the lots were sold and the infrastructure wasn't in. We kind of got the car ahead of the horse a little bit. The infrastructure should have been in and accepted with some as-built, final grade contours, drain contours, and uh, you know, obviously the lights, or a plan or a bond in place to handle those lights. Uh, I know it's been about three, probably three years now, 2008, I believe, uh, maybe five years since uh, since the first houses were actually built in there, and it's still in the dark, and being the majority landowner in there, we need to know something to tell our people we're selling the houses to. So I'm not sure what the legal route would be for the city you know, works it with Georgia Power and spreads it on our taxes or would that be legal to tax us for infrastructure in that situation <coughs> without a tax district? I'm not sure and that's something Jonathan I believe should seek legal counsel on with, with the city attorney on that avenue. I have talked with the attorney. Uh, from what I understand, the developer declared bankruptcy. Yes. So, uh, as far as pursuing the developer for the installation of the lights, our legal counsel did not offer you know much prospect of anything fruitful coming from that. Right. So that kind of leaves us at uh, a decision of who will pay for the installation of the lights. Okay. Some of the landowners that are in uh, uh, the four that I've talked to out of the six are, I have concerns with having to brunt that cost after they're already paying city taxes. Um, you know, uh, we're willing to make some concessions on our side as far as nail code is concerned, but uh, I can't speak for those and I don't want to get in a situation uh, where I would be putting them in a position where they would have to accept uh, a sixth, if you will, of that bill. Um, I, I'm just not sure how we need to handle that down. Taxes would certainly pay for um, the function of street lights in terms of power, police protection, and fire protection. But as far as the cost of installation is concerned, historically a developer has installed those and bore that cost. Okay. So the developer would be? The developer should clear bankruptcy. Okay. So as a default, well, we can't go back that far because the ULDC clearly states, which you accept in ULDC, that all infrastructure must be in before those are uh, allowed to be flatted and recorded, which kind of fell between Matt Martin and the city somewhere. The infrastructure has not been accepted by the city. Right. How many street lights? Well, there's seven lots in there and houses. Right. People are paying the city taxes in there. The infrastructure has not been accepted. How many uh, street lights are required in that subdivision? I counted 13. Now, Georgia Power, that's what they counted. There's 13 pedestals, I believe, that are sticking up. I'm not sure if some of them's been moved, some of them's been knocked over, some of them's been mowed now. We don't have the as built. Uh, I don't think that process was done. I've asked Donnie, and he doesn't even remember seeing any that's been presented. That's a part of the uh, process of signing off on exactly where every valve is located, um, every wire, every pedestal. That's what you do before you cover them up. How many houses are going to be out? There will be a total of 26 <clears throat> of mine, and I think 30 total, but 
24. Well, we spoke about this uh, you know, a couple months back. You were going to get the Georgia Power. I did, and I turned it into Jonathan. And what does Georgia Power say? About? That was the information presented to the council in September. Um, it's included in the package. And what they said was, or what Mr. Nelson said was that Avery, they couldn't turn it loose because of Avery was a developer. Developer. So he's supposed to call them in. in and he can release his yeah. name off of but who will he put in place of that as the developer? And where do we go from there? I certainly can't take responsibility of his infrastructure that he put in of the streets, the drainage, anything, because we didn't do it. We simply bought the lots that were sold at the courthouse steps. It's kind of a catch-21, but I think it needs to, I think it needs to uh, to sit down and try to figure out how we want to approach this. Maybe I don't see it would be fair to burden the rest of the taxpayers in the city on that. Um, I don't know that you normally we would post a bond on something like that until the tax, tax district was accepted in the county in rural areas, but being in the city it falls, it falls between the cracks. And just we can't, uh, we have to follow guidelines on including these subdivisions. And I'm a developer. I have no problem following them. Jonathan, what about the rest of the area? <laughs> Drainage, uh, where do we stand on that? Uh, we have met with Mr. Walden on a couple of different occasions with respect to some drainage issues that need to be corrected, and those were corrected. Um, as far as the final inspection was concerned on the part of the engineer, um, that has not been performed yet. And if council should so choose, we can have the city, <coughs> city engineer go out there and and inspect, and uh, there don't appear to be any any visible concerns, do they? Uh, we've board? actually feel verified, and Don, I, I, I've been impressed with him on what we've been doing out there. Anytime we found an easement that's recorded on our flat prior to us building on it, or putting a fence on that, we've actually physically dug down, inverted and found the pipes and found the uh, both ends of them and then the out there. So, I think he's, he's been on top of it. There's just nothing we can do. I think well, everything's fine except to that point of the light. I'm referring to the infrastructure. Uh, has, has all the infrastructure uh, been deemed acceptable as far as the public works department is concerned? I remember one that they claimed that the tap was up under the drain. Okay. That to be another that was an issue on one of them. But concerning the roads and the curves and the, those appear to be sound, all the drainage yeah. infrastructure. So it looks like uh, just a simple process of getting the city engineer over to recommend that it be accepted and from an infrastructure standpoint, that can be done. However, that still leaves the matter of the lights itself. Okay. What, what does that ordinance say on this? The you ordinance says that. that the developer shall install the lights and pay for them uh, for their operation until uh, the, the subdivision is built out. Now, in the past, uh, what the city has done is allowed for a majority build out, and they have like accepted. 90, I think the last one was 96. We either went as low as 67%. Mm -hmm. is, so, that, is that a spot? Can we use spot money to put lighting in there? It would so, be an eligible expense. Because, again, 13 lights, uh, you let Georgia Power put them in, you're going to pay about $16 a month for every light for rent, plus the power bill. If the city puts it in on its boss expense, only thing we pay is a higher bill on their city on bikes. It's completely a policy decision. The prospects of getting uh, Mr. Walden or his you know bankrupt company to pay for them are yeah, not that's, promising. That's, that's, I mean, that's not going to be <clears throat> so you know determining how those lights are installed and who pays for them is, is the decision that's before you. We're, Actually, we're, we're talking about six where is it? Six homes. There's six, six in there now. I've just finished two new ones. One on the Sugarberry, which is 901 Sugarberry Drive, and 907 Sugarberry. Those have, have just been completed. Um, and that was one of the questions that uh, some of the neighbors asked one of the school teachers there and said, Now that you started, when did we get our street lights finally? I said, Well, we're still working through that. And I think it's time we bring this to the head and let's just uh, see where we end up with it. Because it's been, it's been four years. I know one of those houses built in 2009. I believe. 
course, the housing market plummeted and built Absolutely. <coughs> Absolutely. I mean, I'm, I'm not sitting here pointing fingers. I'm trying to fix a, right. fix a mess up, uh, which I think uh, needs to be addressed. Also, there's one other thing. Uh, in our ordinance, uh, we do have a very specific clarification on that, that we need a turnaround. Now, that road is supposed to go into phase two, which uh, is not owned uh, by the development company, uh, Avery Walton, or uh, whatever his name of this company was. It's owned by a separate individual. It was a partner, so I understand at one time that partnership is dissolved, and now we still have a dead end street. Okay? We have a gravel turnaround that's on someone else's property. There should be no dead end roads in the city at a higher without proper turnaround. And I want to think that's a 60 foot radius for fire and ambulances and such as that. And we don't have that, so that would be another something we need to look at as well. But who owns the property? Um, I'm not sure who owns the property now. Uh, there was no easement in there for this no. additional development? No, it was just brought in as phase one and phase two. Water's edge phase one, water's edge phase two. Phase one got completed. Phase two did not. It was supposed to come on through and go out back on uh, West Stanfield. But there was no, that was never filed with zoning or anything? Because it got to be an easement if they put a plan out. I don't think it did. I think the drawings were turned in. The first phase was approved and planted in 40. I think the second phase sets now. It's up to the city whether they ever let that go or whether that second part would well, that, As evidenced here and <clears throat> within Audubon Heights and the plan development that was granted there, uh, within the subdivision of uh, Woodbridge and also Lawson Farms and also in Oldbury Place. I think um, you know one of the lessons that can be drawn is that the subdivision ordinance needs to be studied and comprehensively rewritten. Um, I've had that uh, told to me by uh, Mr. Martin, the Planning and Zoning Administrator, and uh, I, I think that this is symptomatic. And Mr. Nelson's told me that as well. So. Jonathan, uh, I would like to recommend that the city looks at using, putting the street lights in themselves. Okay. Uh, we need to discuss it with Georgia Power since I believe you said they stuffed it in. They're on their easement and their their <coughs> line. Yeah. So they would they would own those lines where the taps are made to the transformers and the pedestal wiring that's there available now. Mm -hmm. But there's no concrete board or no poles in the ground. It's just got a wire system, and, and I'm not sure if that's all of them. That's what the engineer came out and counted, but that was the engineer from Atlanta. Mm -hmm. um, I feel pretty confident that is the count. Uh, Jonathan has that paperwork. We, uh, this is what uh, Greg Davis from Georgia Power stated. Thank you for allowing Georgia Power to submit a lighting proposal. We propose eight 150-watt high-pressure sodium post-top fixtures, eight 20-foot fiberglass poles. There will be an upfront construction cost of $3,745.52 for the installation service with the underground at the locations. Uh, the total monthly rate would be one thirty one forty four. Um, that includes energy and maintenance as well. That's, right. That's the rent, the rent and for eight lights, how many, 16 lights? Um, that is for eight lights. Eight lights. Eight lights. Eight lights. Eight lights. Eight lights. Now, of course, if Georgia Power installs them, they're going to want to own them. Right. So, do y'all want to solicit a third party to see if those lights can be installed? I, I think it would be good. There's probably the last pole and the lights, and I went through all that. You're on top of that, less than $300 a pole. Would Etheridge be capable of performing that? Uh, yeah. Well, we'll get, we'll get a couple, three different quotes and see what we can do. As are you are proposing that the city pays for the developers? Um, no, well, we, we, we would install the line just like we did down Main Street here. We would put light lights in like we did Main Street here, or 122. Well, oh, that, that's not what I'm asking. I'm asking, are we talking about putting the, installing the lines at city's expense or the developer's expense? Well, the developer would make up, so apparently that's our dead end. Well, who, who is responsible? Who is one that says here that Lawrence Nelson? Mr. Nelson is wanting this done for his subdivision. Well, but we also know those are residents of the city of Ahara. So we owe them the courtesy of the safety of lighting at night. So the so citizens in Ahara owe it. 
rather than the, the person that owns the Well, the builder, the, the original builder is not around. He went bankrupt. Now, as uh, Mr. Lawrence said here, he, he bought lots on his courthouse steps at an auction. And so he well, is not his whose property is it? Yes, I think I can help you with this. Okay. Mr. Avery Walton, the gentleman I don't know, he owned a construction company or development company. He bought a section of land out of the Gulf of West Stanfield. Um, he put in 30 lots. He put the uh, pipes, uh, the, all the infrastructure in with the paving, the curb and gutter. Uh, well, he did everything except had his lights put up. During the middle of all that, he went bankrupt, I assume. The light pedestal, which basically is two wires sticking up out of the ground that attaches to Georgia Power's transformer, is all that's sitting out there in the shop. I, just like you, could have bought a lot in there. It doesn't mean you develop it if you bought a piece of property of record that's been flattened and reported and sold. We bought what was on the courthouse steps when the bank foreclosed on it. Okay? So we have nothing invested in it except we own the lots and we are the majority residential land owners in there and we want lots. Okay, if I went out and bought a lot, who would I buy it from? If you bought a house, you would buy it from my company. But I don't own that right of way and those pipes sticking up out of the ground. I only own from my property in flat. And so, I would sell that same recorded lot with a house on it to you. Well, let's get up some figures. And we'll get that from that. Well, thank you. But it's going to be the... Well, we're going to get some bids for putting some uh, LED lighting out there, fiberglass poles, and... Uh, I, I do, but I mean, if we turn it loose, Georgia Power would put them in, but, you know, it would cost... It does, it's much on the That's an I'm sure you can do it cheaper than Georgia Power can. And well, it's, it's, on. it's the monthly rental fee on lights. You know, Cobra heads that sit on telephone poles, we pay, what, what was it, Jonathan? $12 a month, something like that, every month. And some of those COVID heads have been there for 20 years. Well, we'll keep paying every month. I think, I think that that was, I think we're talking about decorative fixtures in there is what the right. prices were based on, I believe. Right. Well, you've got the ones like in the subdivisions that are on a fiberglass pole and or right. carriage. I think carriage, carriage. Carriage. Right. carriage. Are there any specifications that, that uh, council wants? For the look of these lights, or are you just looking about standard Cobra fixtures? No, not Cobra, because these are in the subdivision. So you've got the ones like in Woodbridge and uh, okay. on the fiberglass pole with the carriage mount, but LED. I think you've got to specify LED because that's like about 10% of the power consumption. John, what does that put those if we split them between the 30 lots? There's 30 lots in there. So you're talking about eight fixtures, you had that. I think that was my email afforded to you, wasn't it? Uh, no, this is this is the actual document okay. that Mr. Davis submitted. Okay, and it was like three grand. Is that sound right? Thirty-seven forty-five. So we're talking about uh, what, eight. If you divide that by eight, that's uh, twenty-four hundred, twenty-two hundred and forty bucks and change for one something like that. Something, something like that. Okay. Do you think that we could put the pedestal block down, set the pole? make the connections and put a picture on it for less than two hundred and forty dollars i don't think we'll find an electrician that do that the problem is it's not just that upfront house if every month they charge you rental on the pole but they do the maintenance as well well like i said these cobra heads uh they like talk to you the power they don't change those out but once in every blue moon we pay ten let's say ten dollars a month for every cobra head in the city. Well, I don't think you're getting cover here is what I'm getting at. Well, look, even these regular street lights like right? we've got out here, uh, on the railroad track uh, west, the city owns it, to the uh, east of the railroad tracks along the Georgia Power. Those things are costing about oh, $13 a month rental fee, plus the power. So every month, every light in this town, we pay a rental fee on. Mr. Bullard, I, uh, is there any way we could put this thing Kind of not necessarily, I'm not asking for it to be asked about it, I'm asked about it on an express line, but 
Let's try to back this up. Well, that's what I'm saying with the some prices. Thank you so much. Thank you for the time. Right, can I get a motion to that there? Okay, I need a motion to authorize the city manager to get some prices on some lights. I need a motion to be. Before we do that, Mayor, I have one question here. It says here that if there's 850 watt high pressure stove and 820 feet fiberglass poles, and this would be a total monthly rate of $131. What other prices are we looking at? Well, then, you know, that there that don't cover the maintenance thing. Well, it, it actually includes, no, that includes the maintenance. Yes, it includes the energy and the full maintenance by George Power. The power consumed by those lights <laughs> on 12-hour days is minuscule. Most of that money you're looking at <clears throat> is rental fee. Georgia Power, I think, it was 14 cents a kilowatt for their charges the city. Now you add that up, and they, they run 12, they average 12 hours a day is what they place the lights on. And add up 14 cents, and then do it for 30 days, and you, and you can look very quickly how much is rental fee. Yeah. And that's forever. North Creek was what we were about that time. That was six lines, I believe. Six lines. Yeah. That was around comparable cost. Yeah. Uh, well, we can still check around. Yeah, I'd like to make a motion that uh, we authorize the city manager to uh, investigate the, the city install the lighting in the uh, subdivision. So, so mentioned. I got a motion. Need a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Motion carried. Okay. Uh, the drain.